And welcome, pool fans from all around the world. This is the Predator WPA World Juniors Championship. 72 junior players in three categories, girls, boys under 17, and boys under 19. 24 players in each category, and this is the opening match. And the finals will be held on Sunday. And we have Felix Vogel from Marburg, Germany, versus Maj Badovinak from Luhan, Slovenia. This is George Teache in the booth, joined by Benjamin Belhazen, the current eight ball French champion. Benjamin, what do we have here? Yeah, we will have a good match here because uh, this is under 17 categories. Both players are playing in Europe, you know, the youth program of the EBBF. So they are pure products of, I would say, the a great sportsmanship in Europe and uh, they are developing a lot of, of young players. Obviously the first of them was uh, Joshua Filler, who is a pure product of the, that school. So I think it's going to be a good match here. They are both, um, I mean, they are practiced. I'm sure they are focused and they are willing to win this World Under-17 Championship. So. Well, it's going to be great. Yeah, the game is 10 ball. It's a race to six. It'll be a double, elim double elimination tournament. And Maj will be breaking first. And he's only 13 he's years thir old. He's yeah, th so. 13 year old from Sylvania. He is sponsored by Longoni Qs. And e Felix has a little more a little more experience is older first and then he plays in Euro Tours in Europe he does a lot of uh, travels already so he's kind of more experienced player well let's speak to that experience a good way to measure experience is something used in the United States and all over the world now called Fargo rate uh, Maj is a 547 Fargo at 13 years of age and Felix Vogel is a 730 Fargo at 15 years of age. A 720 is considered pretty much close to a pro player or yeah. a pro player. So the young man is 15 years old and playing at a very high level. Yeah, that's true. And I've seen him many times in Europe. So uh, this is going to be a good match. Very personal young man. He was, uh, he was telling me that his favorite pro players are Feder Gorst and you'll get never guess this next one. Yeah. Kopi I, I, yeah. What a choice. Yeah. What a choice. Yeah, and that, that determined how he is I mean committed to the game because when you like a player like Fedor who has a great technique and great uh, who is a great person also it it shows that he already knows who you want to become and what you, what you want to do. Precisely, precisely. That's two of the best in the world. That's two of the best role models you could find for this game. Absolutely, yeah. Great champion, so hopefully it will someday become like, I think one of his models also, is because he's from Germany, he has Joshua Filler as a model also. He saw him grow. And uh, I can remember Joshua was playing Euro Tours at 12 or 13 years old. Also, that's so that's that's a process to be used to great tournaments and play at a high level competition that makes you a champion. Also, exactly. Now these guys are exchanging a very tactical opening here. Yeah, actually the one ball is pretty much straight and it's, it's far far from the two ball and he's gonna have to draw this or maybe to play safe and cut it and create distance uh, he chooses what a nice shot that was made the one ball draw back a little bit the players are on the 30 second time clock 60 seconds after the break there is a three foul rule we are playing WPF PA uh, rules so that no early tens the 10 ball must be pocketed for a win on the last the last ball. And it will be also interesting to see how the players deal with the shot clock because I know that they are as young as they are, they are not playing that much tournament under a shot clock. So it will be interesting how to how they create the rhythm of the match also. And how, how it uh, you watch them at the table, how they respond to the shot clock. Yeah. 
Now we just saw, just, just before uh, Maj came to the table, we saw Felix, the shot clock winding down. You can hear the beeps uh, when it's winding down, but you saw him calmly, calmly go through about, to about two seconds and then take a shot. He was down yeah. on the ball, but he was very calm about it. You didn't see him excited, so he's playing under a shot clock before, especially all the Euro tours that he plays in. Do they use the mm, shot clock? They only use the shot clock on the TV tables, I think, and in the last stages of the right. of the tournament. So I don't think he has ever played on the shot clock. Oh, I, I don't okay. really know, but he might not have a big experience of this, but we'll see how we handle this because it's a he little bit more pressure to play to play under a shot well, clock. You, you, you play more rushed. Yeah. You play more rushed. There's no doubt about it. Even the top pros will sometimes be rushed. Yeah, absolutely. Even the top pros are, I mean, you know, you sometimes you underestimate the time that you have. Because actually, 30 seconds is, is enough. Except on such safety plays or a, st a strategical shot, but 30 seconds for a pre -shot, normal pressure routine is, is barely enough. I agree for rotation. Yeah, uh, but we've been we've also here in Klagenfurt we've had one great week of pool. We've had the the World Men's Eight Ball Championship and the World's Women Ten Ball Championships going on at the same time. All the finals, I believe, will be on Sunday, and uh, so we've been commentating Eight Ball Championship, Ten Ball Championship, and now the Juniors. This is the opening round. Yeah, and actually playing Eight Ball on the shot clock is even more difficult. Yes, and that was the point I was going to make. Exactly. Yeah. Good point. Oh, but he's going to uh, not going to bump up. Yeah. He yeah. tried to get the 6 on the on the, the bottom right corner pocket and that's why he missed that that 5 ball. A little bit too much of an English here. Hit it too thick. Okay. And we'll see these uh, young men how they adapt to playing under the lights. Yeah. They have, they have 7 of the Predator Arena lights over this arena, one over the table and six all the way around that one light to light up the arena for you guys in TV land and on the computer. Yeah, they, they are not used also to play on new ball and new cloth. This is that pretty is much of a professional equipment. It is, and, and these are small pockets too. They're four and eighth. Yeah. Beautiful arena. We are playing on Predator Apex 9 foot tables. With the Arcos balls. And we are in Klagenfurt, Austria, the sports arena, sports park arena. They had a partnership with the Yasmin Ocean Academy, I believe. Yes, with the Yasmin Ocean Academy. Also sponsored by Kamui. Predator Group. went a little bit too far on that six ball, but it was a smart shot. I mean, a kind of a containing safety here. Right work is another sponsor. Maj is looking at this six ball. Is he going to bank it back uh, by the seven? Yeah, he, Can't really he, has tell. he has options here. Yeah. He could thin it and try to, to split the balls and use the eight and the nine as blockers. Yeah, just like that. Well coached. That was a good hit. I mean, it's a good containing also. Th the point is, you have a bonus if you have the snooker behind the eight and nine. Or you're leaving a bank, but anyway, you contain the six, this is what matters in this type of situations. Well, leaving a back bank in a case like that, he might be able to make the bank, but getting position on the seven That's will the be asking a lot. Absolutely. He's playing safe behind the eight yeah, nine. Yeah, and that's very seasoned shot. Yeah, actually the eight and the nine are big blockers here. Yeah, so the only point is that he left he left himself with the jump. But anyway, that was a good smart shot, good control of both balls. So well, the jump stick is very popular amongst players, especially of this age and even the younger pros, because it's an exciting shot. Yeah, and people really respond to it, but. You know, I was going to say, <laughs> but they can still be missed. But look at this 13-year-old take a cue and jump over the ball yeah, six feet crazy. away, yeah. pocket the ball. Unfortunately, he scratched. Wow, that's definitely but I one do think that's a highlight yeah. shot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is great. 
for the opening rack of this match, you know, a good safety shot and then a jump shot. Oh my God, he scratched on the corner. That was really, really, definitely one highlight, even though he scratched on the corner. But so. just the maturity, the, the distance, the, I mean, that wasn't a stab in the dark, that was a great shot. Yeah, absolutely, well struck. And uh, this and is not easy to aim when you're jumping. As soon as you elevate the cue, it makes the shot a lot more tougher. So. So now Felix is balling and he still has a problem though with the nine and the ten. The the eight and the nine, sorry. So let's see how he's gonna get shape on this. Now let me ask you a question about these juniors, Benjamin. Do you think uh, the nerves come into play here? Or are they too young to be scared? No, I think the nerves are coming in because of the setup, because of the arena, because of the competition. And uh, I believe uh, it's a little bit later than they are fearless, like maybe 16, 17, 18, where you you start, you know, getting used to tournaments and competition and can uh, handle your emotion better. Because when you're a kid, then it's tough to handle pressure. You have such True. emotion that coming through, they are strong, you know, anger, fear things like that and it's it's hard to overcome them so just the kind of response we were looking for for everybody out there in TV land yeah this is great to see those kids like battling and having the culture of the game playing good shots and uh, trying their best you know okay now Felix has a shot on the eight pretty much of a, of a catch out here. He'll use a little, a little left to get approximately where he was. Yeah, that's a good shot here. Might be frozen on the rail though. He still a little bit of work to do. Well, I think he was trying to get. He's experienced and the, the, the thing is, he is favorite, I mean, he's He's one of the favorites of this tournament, so sure. now it's 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 in a difficult spot to be, you know, for a kid to be a favorite. When he plays in Euro Tours or when he plays in big tournaments, he's only an underdog for the moment. So it's not the same spot, you know, to be. Well, let me give you an idea how favorite he is, uh, using Fargo, Fargo as an example. He's a 730 Fargo rated player playing a 547. There's 150, 183 points difference. That means that he is almost three times better than his opponent. In a race to 12, for instance, he would be giving playing him 12 to four. Wow. 12 to five, maybe. That's huge. That's a, it, it's a huge difference using Fargo yeah, as yeah. a measure. Yeah. That's not necessarily what we're gonna see here. But using Fargo as a measure, that's pretty close. I would say Fargo would say a 12-5 race. This is huge. Yeah. I mean, it, players over 700 are, as you said, 720 is almost professional. So yes. he proved it. Okay, he took the first game nicely. Felix took the first game, yes. I'm going to run the numbers here for that uh, Fargo race, see what we can come up with. I don't know if we mentioned it, it's alternate break. Yeah. No, we did not mention. Yeah, it's race to six alternate break. Yeah. And Maj, Maj starting, started uh, breaking, so he yeah. will be break. Maj will break whenever the score is even and Felix will break whenever the score is odd. It's 1-0, Felix will be breaking. Well, his break is, he let the cue balls falling forward on him. Yeah. But he made a ball on the break. He's got a, a look at the one ball. Uh, that was a good impact though. It didn't hit it square, but it, the break was powerful. He made the seven ball in the top left corner pocket. 
I, I wouldn't fault him for banking this ball because the skew ball is going to go up by the six ball in the upper right left-hand corner there and get position on the on the two. And yeah, even if he offensive. misses, yeah. it's a two-way shot. Yeah, absolutely. This is offensive. He can also try to thin the one and go towards the four or five uh, for to try to play okay. safe, a containing safety. But your bank shot option is, is good because you could go up table and... Uh, can manipulate the one mm -hmm. some kind of way and uh, get get shape on the two. So yeah, he's watching for the bank here. I don't I know if he I already. I can't tell if he's banking it or if he's going to try to cut this in. No, I think he's banking it. I I I, I agree with the bank. I don't know if he, they already worked on the kind of uh, banking system. Well, see, he, he drew the ball. He got he got fortunate to get behind the 10 ball. Yeah. But he drew the ball. If he would have just followed the ball, his cue ball would be on the left side. Yeah, towards the 6. Um, Correct. Yeah. Actually, he didn't play a two-way shot. He no. He go for the bank and played shape on All the offense. two ball. And yeah. All yeah. offense. Side. And that's something that comes with being 15 years old. Absolutely, yeah. The that's seasoning right. comes later. But Absolutely. he's apparently pretty well seasoned. He wasn't afraid of the shot. He didn't waste any time in calling the bank. Uh, you, you, we should also n don't forget that they are young kids first mm -hmm. and then they are playing in in the arena under the shot clock for a World War Junior Championship so how much pressure they will feel Let me give you an example of that Fargo race we were talking about. In the Fargo Mild, it would be a 12 to 5 race. In the Fargo Medium, it would be a 5 to 2 race, would be the closest to 50%. And in a Fargo Hot, which is favored more for the lower rated player, mm -hmm. it would be 13 to 4. Wow. So he's favored by nine games. In a race to six, uh, we're looking at 6-3. Okay. But maybe also the the young kid from Slovenia didn't play that much game, you know. May I yes, uh, that uh, and the way to address that with Fargo is to look at their robustness, number okay. number of games in the system. Oh, okay. And actually, we can look take a look at that, and see how the players are doing. Okay, he still has a problem with the four or five year on the long rail and I I don't know if I'm not sure he has the angle to go there pocketing the three on the side so he has to f he has to figure out how he's going to go there maybe a stun follow or a stun run through to go to the short rail and then back into the balls oh no he's, he's electing to play a safety on the four ball maybe roll it and st took the cue ball behind the five. Yeah, just like he's pointing with his fingers now. Again, a good point, for instance, Felix, the more experienced, the older player, has 1,309 games in Fargo. Maj has 338 games, barely established. Okay, so maybe it was over 600, maybe. We'll see. I, I, yeah. If it was, it, uh, they say two to Two to three hundred, I think, in my opinion, is three to five hundred will give you a good idea okay. of, of a player uh, okay. uh, ability. And it's just a measure of, of their, where they are at the time. Yeah, They're also. They're going to yeah. grow. Yeah. Nice hit, but now he's, yeah, he's yeah. left it wide open for Felix. Yeah, actually, Felix had a good control of this rack, made the three ball on the side and then play a solid safety on the four, which, gave, which gives him the opportunity to run out this rack. Try to go two rails. Back to the same pocket, but fell short here. It's 
too interesting to see what he's going to do now. Yeah, he's, he's going for the bank here, going three rails with the cue ball, because the six ball is not hanging, but is really near the pocket, so even if he stays away from the six ball, he would be able to pocket it. Came short on the shot. Now the see, bank. yeah, that shot tells me that, that Felix is, is rather confident about yeah. pl playing his opponent because that he had an easy safety there. Yeah. Where I think I think Marj would have played the safety, Felix will play the ball because of the experience and he's probably thinking my opponent's not gonna shoot back at me too well. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. We'll just see. This is a great lesson for the for the juniors to learn how to play in the arena. Yeah, with a shot clock. Great experience. And a referee in the arena. Yeah. I was going to try to bank the five. Maybe it'll stop the cue ball into the nine right there. A little bit too thin here. And Felix has a shot on the five. He has the wrong, the wrong angle, though. Has to... A work to do with the cue ball here, going to the side rail and back to the center of the table, I believe using a stun draw. Big stroke here, big shot. Yeah, nice. I think he uses too too much draw here, that's why you run into the eight. I would have stayed away a little bit more on the six ball, but he went deep into that shot, believing he could go around the eight But new new cloth and new ball slides a lot, so. Well, one of the things about, you know, calling the game for the juniors is we're going to have time with quite a few innings at the table, and we'll go over some of the players that are some of the other scores and the players and where they're from. Keep in mind that this 10 a.m. first round is under 17. For instance, Ho Wan Kwok from Vietnam is playing Ivan Rudenko, and they're tied at one. Uh, Guan Yu U and Salem Al Shukar. Al Shukar leads two to one, and that's, I believe, the United Arab Emirates and uh, Chinese Taipei. And then we have this match here that's German and Sylvanian. Then we have Jack Be uh, Jack Beggs from New Zealand playing Hayden Ernst from the USA, and Beggs leads three to two. Hank Leenan leading three to one from the U.S. leading three to one over Swan Sean Beggs, who is also from New Zealand. Must be Jack's brother. Oh yeah, yeah, that's nice. So we have a couple of juniors here that made the trip to Austria. And then we have Rico Rompanen, who's getting to be pretty well known in the United States um, from Finland. And he's playing Sky Vandenberg from the Netherlands. Oh, uh, the son of Nick Vandenberg. The son of Nick Vandenberg. I actually remember Nick coming to Tucson in 1999. We were <laughs> speaking about it when we were interviewing the players. I spoke to Nick about it. He remembers it rather well. He was 19 years old then. Yeah, that's crazy. He was on the road with uh, Alex Lilly. Yeah, yeah, I know and both of them for yeah. a long time, you know. Well, uh, Hank Lindner from the USA leads 3-1 to one over Sean Beggs. Uh, and Rico is tied with Sky Vandenberg, 1-1. One, one. And then Chan Phi, Phi Hang from Vietnam is playing Revo. Oh, I, I met Revo on the bus. Revo my Maim. Memory, yeah, Memory from, from Estonia. From Estonia. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we had a, a lot of nationalities. Sure, all over the world. Then we have Jazz Makhani from the USA playing Kim Mingun, Minjun from uh, Chinese Taipei. Jazz leads three to one. Now this 10 ball for it's Maj like, to yeah. tie it up. Yeah, he made a great shot on the nine the, there. And something we didn't mention is, is that it's the first game, first round, and it's always to have a little more pressure on them 
the first round is always difficult to handle so we have shot clock we have arena we have first round so mm -hmm. those two kids are really under pressure so yes and you know to, to watch them move around the table to watch them take their shots they don't seem pressure yeah they're playing pool at that's this age they're playing pool. yeah and that's a good point i mean your brain and your body keeps this in mind you know you just you just get experience from here and uh, that's really important to have such a great experience at such a young age this is how you make top professional players and that is why when you use Fargo rate as a measuring system um, you know I, I'm from the United States and I, I, I don't like to point this out but <laughs> it's very glaring uh, give you an example the top hundred players in the world there's 47 players that are 800 plus Fargo 15 are Filipinos in the 800 plus three Polish four Americans which now includes Gorst okay they're, okay they're they're trying to say they're trying to put him under the American flag or they're putting him under the American flag so it's four and four four Americans out of the top 100 players 28 are Filipino wow that's 28 percent eight are Polish and six are USA so when you when you talk about the EPVF uh, working with juniors all over Europe and you look at glaring numbers like that that's why Europe has many many if not most of the top players yeah, in the Asian countries too. yeah because it's been like that for like almost maybe two decades yes I remember uh, Josh Filler was playing Euro Tours he was only 11 or 12 and so he used to the high level tournaments since he was a kid yes so and and to watch Josh Filler at the table he is comfortable he's playing he's playing yeah that's it you know now yeah. you can see him really focused you can see him you can see um, the man he is now playing pool yeah but there's still a more comfort zone for him yeah and the more situation yeah and I feel that is one that plays a game managed to to keep it as a game and to handle the pressure really really good I, mean. uh, I, I, I totally agree but there's one other thing that I think uh, needs pointing out Josh Filler's a very natural yeah he's an instinctive player he has the instinct a lot of players have to develop that yeah. they grow into it they're trained into it or they train themselves into it he's a natural and yeah. that goes a long way in any sport yeah because uh, when you more it's of course he's working hard of course he's learning uh, he recently moved when he recently moved to the US he learned how to play wine pocket so he developed his game and he's also a hard worker but he still has the instinct to let it go and this is a big point yeah. you know to uh, to know how to let go and to let your game become unconscious and yes. keep it going you know and and l look at Felix just work his way around the table here with an open shot he's I got the cue ball on a string he's in deadline and just making quick work of the open shots he was provided with yeah this is great to watch well did he yes he got there you yeah. have to cut it in the side and come around for the tent yeah one one rail maybe. oh he's not going to come around for it. he's going to draw down yeah. and up okay center table perfect position for game number for win number two and game number three and Felix will be breaking with a two to one lead in this race to six and for those of you listening out there we will I will try to provide you as the match continues and the matches continue with some updates on some on the scores may not get to all of them uh, but I'll do do my best to keep you informed and while he's racking the balls um, let's see Jack Beggs from the US from the New Zealand leads Hayden Ernst four to two 
Hank Lienen from the U.S. leads Sean Beggs 4-1. Rico Rompanen leads Sky Vandenberg 2-1. And then Chan Fang Hang leads Revo. My Maria 3-0. And Jack McHaney leads Kim Ming Jun 4-1. Ho Wan from Vietnam leads Ivan Rudenko from the Ukraine. Two to one. Oh, we always made the tangle there. And U Guan Yu from Chinese Taipei leads Salem Al Sukar one to two. Trails uh, Al Sukar, I'm sorry, Trails Al Sukar one to three. Remember, it's WPA rules, so if the, the 10 ball would have gone on the break, then we would have respotted. Now, no balls on the break for Felix. Maj has an open shot on the one. Still, it has work to do on the two because the two ball is in a tricky position here. Has any player made a ball on the break yet? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Now, if the 10 ball gets made with WPA rules, it gets spotted up. But if it's called, you continue to shoot, just like any other object ball on the table. OK, he got away with the one ball, leaving himself a long shot on the two. But still, he has it. Try to stun it and put the cue ball cross table between the six and nine to the center of the table. The four ball is blocked by the 10 ball, though. shot here so he'll probably play the 410 combo and continue to shoot at the four yeah uh, the I think 10 so. will spot yeah because the four ball is low and couldn't be pocketed in, in the side pocket I think that's a nice shot here because he made the effort to go close to the four ball so that the combination will be easier even if it's never easy. Good shot here, leaving the four ball near the pocket so that he can continue his run. Now keep in mind the girls division is also playing. And I know there's a couple of young ladies, a few young ladies, four of them, I believe, from the U.S. You have uh, Kennedy Maidman from the U.S., Savannah Easton, the Roadrunner, Bethany Tate, and Noelle Tate. Two left-handers with an older brother that is also a junior. Last year, I believe, Joey Tate. All no, from the same family. All from the same oh, family well and nice. all left-handed. Ha! Huh. This is good. This is great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. imagine when you were a kid traveling sure. around the world with your brothers and sisters I, to compete. In fact, I met them at the airport. Randy um, Tate is the, the father. He was with them. That's great. Uh, Tani Mina from Japan. Hong Zinju from Taipei. Tan V. Valam from India. Uh, Wang Ming Ru from Taipei, Chinese Taipei. Uh, Amber Nicole Kelchu from Canada. Now here's a good one. Linnea from Sweden. Alada from TNC. Jonska Isabel from Poland. We also have a, a good players from Europe, uh, which is in his home soul, is uh, Lena Primus. He's playing just at the table here. Okay. Just beside us. There's a link Romina from Germany, Primas Lena, yeah. is that you say, from Austria, from Austria right yeah, here. Yeah. So she's in her hometown or in her home country. Sherman Jolim from the Netherlands, Astrid Santos from Guatemala, Margaret Santos from Guatemala, Laura Gonzalez from Colombia, and Sofia Mass from the USA. Keep in mind there'll be 24 of them. I have four more to go. How are we doing with the uh, seven ball down to the seven? He seems to wait, uh, bide his time 
uh, Felix does. He just bides his time for an opening shot when everything is open and he just runs it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like, he he's not even rhythm. trying to run out until he gets to the last four or five balls and they're wide open. Yeah, I mean, um, it's great strategy. Raj had a lot of work to do and he, he did pretty good playing the combo on the 4-10, mm -hmm. but then he has something to do tough with the bridge to go f to from the 4 to the 5, and then he misjudged it. So Felix had, uh, had an open shot there and uh, he's tried to get some kind of a rhythm to the table. Shireen Voleri from Switzerland, Park Soyul from Korea, Song Nak Young from Korea, Gulik Tina, Tina Gulik from Croatia, and Oktawia Brodeka from Poland. I mean, this is great to have such an international field. Yeah, very well, we are international. All over the world. We are in Klagenfurt, Austria. How more international do you want to be? <laughs> That's great. And for a three to one lead, Felix pockets that 10 ball. They'll get the rack in the balls and it'll be Matt Maj breaking. This is gonna go to a break and we'll be right back. the better player will still win. This temple to win the title he is your champion. You will champion. Champions. And we are back to the live action. We have Benjamin Belhazen from France breaking down the pool match. Oh, and the referee calls a foul on the break because the cue ball was over the head string before he breaks. Because, yeah, you see, you see the cue ball? The cue ball is really yes. a little bit above the line. And so that's not that's not a regular shot. It might be behind the line for a starting to start right. a game. So that's why the referee calls foul. Well, they'll learn quick. Yeah, absolutely. you don't see that very often. No. In fact, I've seen several calls now throughout the course of the. This is the third day here in Austria, where fouls have been called. One for for the for the cue ball being across the head string on the lag. Yeah, I saw uh, it also. And they yeah. called a foul. Yeah. And of course, what happens is you forfeit the lag and the other player gets to break first. That's it. So Felix now is getting given the opportunity to, to run this one. See how he handles the go from the two to the three to the four, which is a, an issue here. That's to get the right angle on the three ball to go to the four. Going one and two rails here getting himself an angle. That's, that's a good shot. Oh, he's trying to go, I think he's trying to go in between the five, six to reach the four. Now, Ben, let me ask you a question about that foul. Did he call it because it was across the head string or because it went in the side pocket? No, 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 uh, because... Uh, he called it when he broke, yeah, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Well, so he before, called before, before yeah, it scratched, yeah. correct. got away with it and 
his, his shape on the four is really good. So now he maybe bump a little bit of the six to get shape on the five. Yeah, just like that. He has to draw a little bit to make sure he's, in, he's on the right side of the five on the side pocket. Like that. Mm -hmm. He didn't push the six ball enough though, but I think it's still okay. Drawing back the cue ball near the side pocket here. Oh, maybe he has more angle than I expected, so cue ball has to travel up table, maybe. You know, with the eight ball and the seven and the nine up there, he might choose to shoot this ball in the corner and come down for the next ball, for the six. Although yeah. it's very easy in the side, but he has to avoid, he has traffic. He's playing it in the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he has much more angle than I expected, so. Yeah, he knows that if he goes a high ball, then those three balls or up, up table comes into play. It looks mm. tricky though. Yeah, it's tricky, and that's why I, I, I think he might choose to shoot it in the, in the upper corner pocket. That's an option also to avoid the traffic, yeah. And he does. Clear. Good shot, yeah. He lays nice here to lay the cue ball on that top rail for the seven. That's where I'd want to be. Mm -hmm. Just lay it right on the, on the first diamond from the left-hand corner pocket. See if you can just lay it on the rail. Kind of a cut shot though on the six, and uh, maybe he'll choose to come in between the seven, eight, mm -hmm. one rail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like that. Just he just lays it on the rail. He's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And now we come perfect angle, nice natural angle for the eight. Yeah. Make sure to have a straight in line shot on the eight, like that, to keep himself an angle on the nine. This is pretty pretty routine run out ro or rotation game. He doesn't want down. too much angle, but he does not want to be straight in. Yeah. He's perfect. He, he's playing very well. Yeah, he, I think he and just... And, and you said that about him be before. Yeah, yeah, I know You've him. You've seen him so play. Yeah, yeah. This guy, yeah this Benjamin guy. says this <laughs> young man is beaten several times in tournaments, and I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, he beat me uh, uh, in one tournament. I think it was last year. And uh, we played each other, and we had a good match there. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't too far off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I, I know, we know in Europe when you are playing a few international tournaments, you know everybody, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, I do notice that, that when the players come to, to the U.S. They're all very familiar with each other. And now we have a 4-1 to one score with Felix. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, just making quick work of the last four, five, six balls. He just waits his turn yeah, and to get a good shot. Yeah, and, and he, I mean, he is one of the favorites of this tournament with Riku Rampanen. I mean, those two players, they are young players, but they are a great experienced player. I mean, European, European competition wise, you know. Well, so. Riku has had his season and he has come to Vegas now for the last two years uh, for the Predator Pro Billiard Series. He's played, I believe, in the uh, Alpha Las Vegas Open mm -hmm. and 10 ball and I think he's played in the Predator World uh, 10 yeah. ball and I, I think he and in the Predator series he's he taken the down last some big names yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I believe he beat Sky Woodward he's beat Neil Schweyen. Uh he's got some big scalps under his belt <laughs> yeah already yes so is they are both both of them are really favorites to to win this tournament. And this is how you learn how to win big tournaments. Becoming world junior champion and then world under 19 champion. Well, and look at one of the up and coming players right now in the men's pro, mm -hmm. if you want to call it a pro tour now, but on all the pro tournaments, you have Jonas Suto uh, from Spain, who is a, a multi uh, junior champion. Yeah, former world junior champion. Exactly. Yeah. Also Fedor Gorst. Fedor, Fedor Gorst is another one. Also Kachi. Oh. Eklin Kachi. Yeah. Uh, what about Clevio? I, I don't know him actually. Uh, he's I 18 now, so I, I, is, yeah. is he playing? In, he's not. I didn't see his name on here for the juniors. He might be. I think he plays the men and ball. Yeah, he, well, he's, he's, ball, play, yeah. he's playing in the World 8-Ball. 
And he just made the, I think he made the final 32. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, yeah, last night uh, he w I saw him in his match, and I think he won that match. He was trailing. He also, like his brother, comes from the snooker, and he's really strong fundamentals, strong technique. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised he made the live 32. In the yes, um, I am pretty sure he did. I think we just posted the... I think we just posted it, and, and he I mean was on both the final third. Brothers are great players, of course. Eklund Kachi is world champion already. I two-time ten ball champion. Yeah, yes, but he comes from the he comes from that European school, you know. Yes. Former in world fact, he now champion. has a pool hall in uh, in, uh, in Albania. Albania. Yeah. All with all predator equipment. Yeah. Okay, so. Maj just missed the one ball and then open table for Felix. Still has some work to do from the one to the two on the side. See how he handles to go to the three then. He left himself a good, good angle here. Maybe he can go three rails, but there's traffic here with the four, six, and seven. It wouldn't be easy to go in between the four, six. That's why he's, he's going tries to do this, maybe. Uh, would you? Uh, I can see him using some right hand, yeah, uh, uh, low English to go two rails out of the left, left upper left hand corner pocket uh, towards the ten ball. Just oh, he went this way. Yeah. He, oh, he went between the four six, yeah. just like you said. That was a big line here, but yeah. still, it was a good shot. I mean, you have to control the speed and uh, not yeah. putting too much English on the cue ball so that it open if it opens up not too much on the second rail. So. Yeah. That's a great shot here. It looks a little bit flat on the three ball, but from here it's hard to say, but you can ju just draw to the rail underneath the side pocket, just like that. Oh, maybe yeah. maybe that's too that's too hard here. A little hot there. Yeah, he stroke it too much. I mean, he could have left himself just, just behind the, rail. the side pocket. Yeah, it would just have above been okay. the side pocket, it would have been fine. He would have been perfect, actually. So now he's in trouble, he has to well. kick it. He'll try kick to create it. distance between the balls. Yeah, I think the shot here is to play one rail, to slow it down and try to push the four ball to the side rail, leaving the cue ball maybe behind the six, seven as blockers. So you have to, to hit the low side of the four which is not easy. Always oh, going the other way, try to make the four maybe. I was just given information that Clevio is playing in the juniors. So he is under 18, he's still 17, I believe. Well, oh, he's under 19, so he can be 18. Yeah, yeah exactly. I met him, in fact, I called his game. He played an excellent match with Joshua Filler. And we just have the highlight shot, right? Yeah, it just that was a highlight shot? Yeah, he just, he just called, watch, he just called the four ball oh, and four made ball, it. perfect. Yeah. Kick the four ball in, and he went up, up table to, to try to reach the five, but now he looks like he's going to play a safety shot on the five. I don't know if he tries to cut this, being really aggressive. We'll see. Yeah, that's the right shot. This is conservative. Nicely done. He might have given the right edge. If anything, it's an easy kick, either off the bo uh, bottom rail or off the side rail. If he sees a, a really slice of the five, then he could just thin it and try to go up the ball, sending it like one rail into the six ball to stop the five ball, maybe. And, get the, and get the cue ball up to where it is now? Yeah. Uh, In that area? It's a thin cut. Yeah, I don't know. Um, how much you can see of the five ball, but if you can see it, I definitely send it towards the six, try to stop it. Oh, he's going, he's going right English, so maybe he didn't see it. Uh, he was oh. trying to kick it. So yeah, to yeah. clip it. I think he was trying to clip it thin and go up table. That's not an easy shot. Well, we have some informed viewers giving us a little information that Clevio Kachi is playing Mario He later today. 
in the eight ball. It's going to be a great match there. Yeah, we, we are now down the last 32 in the men's eight ball, yes. so things are getting hotter and hotter. And the women will be playing also today, I believe, at 11.30. Yeah, I think the next yes. round is one ten ball, yeah. An exciting time to be at the Sports Park Arena here in Klagenfurt, Austria. It looks like he has a slightly angle on the seven and uh, he doesn't like it. Maybe he can just draw into the 10. Uh, yeah, just okay, underneath that's fine. It, just underneath the 10. So, young man has such good control of that cue ball. Yeah. It's going to be a slight draw here uh, for the 10 in the side, or he might even, well, I think he'll bring it back just a little is all he has to come back. If he comes back six inches, he's good. Came back more than enough. Great. Better. He gets used to the speed of the table also, playing in the first round, so. And a five to one score. Yeah, he's taking a big lead now. Feeling a little bit more comfortable at the table. You know, with uh, the two Kachi brothers in the final 32 of the uh, men's world eight ball championships, I just hope they don't play each other until maybe the semifinals. <laughs> Wouldn't it be something to see them both in the finals? Yeah, right. I mean, it's possible because there are two top players. I mean, yes. Gladio is a little bit less experienced than uh, England, well. of course, but. I called this match One against uh, Joshua Filler, and for the first 10 racks, nobody Vegas, missed the ball. They, were, they played perfect pool except for the break. They were breaking dry. Yeah, that's, and each time they came tough. to the table, each one ran the table for 10 racks. That's strong. So uh, here's an 18-year-old young man that just doesn't miss a ball. And he lost that match because he did actually miss an 11 ball, and he missed, he missed two shots. Yeah, and that's it. In when the entire match. Like top players, the like filler, it's, sometimes it's too much, but still a great player. Again, good break, but a little bit of lack of energy. Good impact, but nothing went in. So we're going to start this game by just safety battle, I believe. And when you break the ball soft, um, that's kind of what it becomes. It's a tactical yeah. battle. Now he's on the rail, far from the one ball. The ideal shot would be to roll the one ball and stick the cue ball behind the two, but it's it's really difficult to, to go for a rolling shot. All what the about rolling the, the, the cue ball on the high side of the one and try to stick it behind the eight? Yeah. Wait till you see the angle. Yeah, it yeah. lays pretty natural for that. From here, it's tough to say, but... Yeah, see, look at it from here. Yeah. It's going to be hard to get behind you. Yeah. He's going to have to use... Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he, he has to use a little pace to do that. Oh, we call the push out. Oh, he's, he's asking a question to his opponent. We'll take the shot and see. You also have another shot, which is bank the one ball, four rails. I mean, short, I mean, yes. long, short, long, below the three ball, and send it on the other short rail. This is a that is one shot. of my yeah. favorite favorite safeties, especially yeah. when there's no balls on the table. Yeah, there the cue ball will go into in between the five six on the way back. But yeah, yeah, that's that's the yeah, shot. But, but the, yeah, the, see that three ball hampered that. Yeah. But he was he, he had to come underneath that to begin with. Yeah, at least he saw the shot. Good safety, exactly, yeah. uh, exactly. To recognize it is one thing. Yeah. To execute it is another. Yeah, because it was far from the one ball. It was on the side rail jacking up so that was not easy but I think he recognized the shot now Felix is left with another tough shot here frozen on the rail I don't think I'm not sure he could cut this on the side it's hard to tell from here but yeah also tries to send the cue ball behind the four oh. ball which he did I think almost um, yeah almost so maybe he's left the left side of the one here a cut shot maybe yeah if he can slice the one on the left side and go in between the five six going to the short rail would be okay 
Yeah, I hit it to the sink, I believe. But oh, he, got, he got away with oh, it. Oh, there's is there a window? There is yeah. a window, and he can make the ball. But, well, he can draw the ball and uh, probably get to the side rail and come back for the for the two. Yeah, I don't know if he can, if the draw can bite enough the the one ball to come to the side uh, rail and back. But he's showing me that he can. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think I could do it. I think you could do it. <laughs> he I pretty he much think he can do it. He has a nice, smooth Good stroke. Good stroke, that's, yeah. That's true. But he only have three seconds. That was great. That's and there great you go. Shot. The and bump helped. Wow, that's a great shot. I mean, under a shot clock, under pressure, that was a great shot. But you see what I said earlier uh, when I said the shot clock doesn't seem to bother him? He got down on the ball. Yeah. He aimed and just really didn't rush it. He took his shot. True. I think he has a, a slight of an angle here to go back from this. Oh, okay. He drew back straight back. Okay. Shing Man's impressive. Uh, he has a really thin cut on the tree to play the combination. Maybe losing the cue ball a little bit here. And with the traffic all over the table. How the would you feel about table? him playing a, a carom? Yeah, you might lose Is the, the six ball. Does the six ball block him uh, going down to the corner? Yeah, I think so. He plays it soft. He should be able. Oh, it's the eight ball that would block him. That's a good shot. That's going to come back out, though. That's a pro shot. Oh, it yeah. didn't. It, yeah. Nice shot. Very nice shot. Be patient. Try to get ball in hand here. And you know, playing 10 ball is not the same as playing 9 ball. Then you will most likely play defensive play because your opponent has to call the shot. He cannot make a ball in another pocket or something, so. Three ball, side pocket. Maj Badovinak. Badovinak. Yeah, he tries to play two rails here. Or is it Badovinac? Right? Maybe it's Badovinac. Yeah. Badovinac, yeah. okay. I don't know. But Oh, oh he hit it. A, that was a good hit. And it's going to come over for a safety. Well. Yeah. That was a good nope, double cross bank. I mean. Yeah. He's got a shot. He can play this three ball into the four, it looks like. Just to use a little bit of right hand spin to get around the nine and go right into either the four or hit the rail first and go off the four. Depends what he calls. Yeah. And uh, the seven ball would be here to stop the cue ball. So. He has to really focus on the speed to make the combination and then cue ball will stop into the, the seven ball. Yeah, just like that. Oh. oh. So now Mash has an opportunity to tie up this match for five games to two. Calling the combination, controlling the three, leaving him hanging in the pocket and going from the three to the five. He said his uh, coach's name was Ninja Gradinsky. Yeah. Gradiznik. Yeah, he is the organizer of tournaments mm -hmm. in Slovenia, in Ljubljana especially, at the pool club. Gradiznik. Okay, he's going one and two here from the five ball on the side, which is okay. Slightly angle on the, the five to go one rail and pocket the six ball in the same side pocket as the five, I believe. Five balls, back pocket. Yeah, still he has to jack up a little bit using low left. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a thin catch shot actually. Oh, I missed it, that was not easy. Uh, and you overcut the five. Yeah. Actually, we saw Mika Gradiznik in the, in the attendance. He was watching his... Yeah, he's yonk. back in the lime green and white shirt with a little uh, ski cap on. That's a huge tough shot here. Favix jacking up a little bit. Try to make the, the five on the bottom left. Mm. Almost made it. Oh, he's going to get away with the shot. Yeah, he, he leaves a catch out on the five, but the cue ball is going to run into the seven ball, I believe, so. It's also going to be hard to cue comfortably. Yeah, because of he's the gonna, six He's, he's going to be stretched out a little bit. 
and over the six. This is definitely not an easy shot here. Yeah, most Cue likely ball. players Whoa. used to hit it too thick well. because of the jacking up. Yeah. This really has been the story to this match, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, Felix just waits for the open, open table and then makes quick work of it. Runs the last four, five, six balls. Looks like he's straight in on the five and how he gets to the six ball would be interesting because the six, because the seven is like really near the short rail. So he has to, has to work a little bit here to get a good position. Looks like he doesn't have the right angle to, natural angle to do it. Maybe he's just gonna draw towards the side pocket and cut the seven ball. Yeah, just like that. It's a good shot here. He has too much angle though, so. Yeah, more draw shot here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he'll come around. He can't close the angle fast enough, can he? Yeah. Going forward. Oh, he tried to. He tries to kill the cue ball here. Yeah. Right. He's gonna use a nine. Nine, yeah. Uh, we don't know if he intended to use an eye, but the cue ball is coming on a nice line for yeah. position. Make sure he come back enough to have the right angle on the nine. To go down for the, uh, for the ten. That's a good shot here, playing two rails and up. He needs these two balls to close out the first match in this. Predator WPA World Juniors Championship. And match number one in the books. Felix Vogel. Felix Vogel over Maj Badovinac. Six to one. We'll be back with more action. This has been Benjamin Belhazen and George Stecha in the booth. Thank you, folks, for joining Thank us. You. See you later. Later.